Alrighty, folks, we're going to get a little bit deeper into our dive on uh, air conditioning, uh, you know, diagnosing. Uh, but I want to get into uh, some, because now, okay, uh, we don't just rely on me mechanical uh, adjustments anymore in our air conditioner. We used to have a, a lever that went across, and we used to have uh, the blower motor adjusted by another lever or a push button. Oh, whatever system you had in your particular older car, now the computer is taking over. And I want to get into a little bit on electronics and start getting to some basic uh, computer operation and how it functions and how it does. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and sh uh, show and go ahead with my share. I'm going to open up this and we'll get ourselves started. All right, so. Yeah, it, it, it's been around for quite a while, so you really need to know how electronics work and also how the computer works. Uh, everything from your phone to uh, a, a fully operational desktop or laptop is, is part of what we're going to be talking about. Uh, we're going to be kind of bringing that into how we look at it as far as our AC goes. And a lot of this stuff is networked in with other computer systems also. So, you know, it, it, it's been around for quite a while, like I said. It's around the 1990s is when it started go, coming into passenger cars. And they were, you know, more and more were involved in uh, getting into electronics. It was, you know, slowly um, getting into the H, uh, our air conditioning world. So it continues to grow, it continues to go faster, but this is what we really need to understand is, we start off, you know, it, this is just showing a quick little uh, di uh, diagram, kind of a little picture diagram, not really into uh, what we'll be going over in just a second here of how it, it lays out in our uh, actual uh, wiring diagram. This is just giving, okay, we know we have the compressor coil. We know we have the low pressure switch. We know we have a cycling switch. And then we have the computer or the control, or the control head, I should say. Sometimes the computer is in the control head. Sometimes it's a separate unit. But this is what we know. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the actual diagram so this is on you know kind of under the hood where the power distribution starts and then how we go from the PCM up. Uh, so again, we're at the power on the top and we're looking at the uh, compressor and I see that it has a AC relay. This AC relay is going to be actual, which is the compressor relay, uh, is going to be what controls the compressor uh, clutch. And I have in the PCM, and it's a little you know, transistor that switches that when it gets the right information. You pl push the button on the dash, okay? Say, hey, I want AC, I've got my temperature dialed in. Okay, turn on an air conditioning compressor. It's not gonna turn on until it goes through uh, the actual uh, computer. It's gonna look at some parameters saying, okay, this looks good, this looks good, this looks good, this looks good. And then it's going to go ahead and say, okay, we can uh, turn on the AC re relay, which is going to turn on a, a, the AC compressor. Now, one thing I want to show, you know, kind of give you an idea on what in the heck is this clamping diode doing here? That is protecting a lot of the electronic components. What happens when you open up a switch, either the relay, which that's how they uh, protect the actual uh, PCM too. If you open up that switch, there's a surge of an uh, energy that has to go somewhere. And what we do with a clamping diode is we take and re make it so it doesn't get reflected back at that relay. We're gonna actually bring it to ground to where actually it will dissipate 
and you're not going to get that smack onto the actual um, AC relay. You can just imagine what would happen if it was connected directly to the PCM. So we have little protection stuff going on. So if you'll see that symbol, it allows it to go in one direction and it goes back through that coil and then it eventually ends up in the ground side. All right, so if the conditions are correct, the like I said, the AC uh, module will uh, ground the uh, AC uh, relay, and then the AC, uh, the AC request will be a, a voltage. Okay, this is what I want to get in. It will be a voltage that actually goes from you. Okay, I'm requesting it on, and it's going to give a uh, signal into the computer. Now, this is more, you know, again, it's a computer language, so... When you push that button, it says it's going to be like a, a 1 uh, versus a 0, and it's going to just put that signal in, and it, re it really uh, uh, is quite fast when it goes with 2, and it gets a request to actually turn it on, and then the PCM will say, okay, it's good to go. Now, there are different designs out there, but this is kind of the basic idea of how uh, an AC controls that relay. So uh, any computer using, uh, you know, including in the, in the uh, vehicle is simply a, a device designed to process information. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit before, but just a slight bit. Uh, and the actual, it is just taking and processing information from what it's been given. And Depending on if it's a signal that's an analog or a digital type signal, you have an analog signal up here right now, is how that actually operates. Uh, because with an analog, remember, it has to go through, <coughs> excuse me, it has to go through an analog to digital converter before it can actually go to the computer. The computer then can recognize it. The computers do not like analog signals. <coughs> So the, uh, the analog signal you have up here now, this is a digital signal. <coughs> this digital signal uh, is the, the signal that the computer actually can understand and look at it's just highs and lows. The analog signal was highs and lows, but that was more of a sweeping high and low. This is a direct high and low, so this is what makes this is why we call it a digital signal versus the one before was an analog signal. Hey, this is just one of the things I, I didn't say yet, but I want to you to know is that the computer only understands ones and zeros, which is what the uh, what is called the binary code. The binary code uh, takes uh, these zeros and uh, ones and converts it it takes what we put in like a word or a number and we uh, then it converts it to an actual ones and zeros so like what you see up here is an index of zero and then the binary is zero 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 uh, like that it could be an a character or a zero uh, and, and it, it kind of goes through this whole alphabet and it doesn't uh, discriminate against uh, uh, you know, uppercase and lowercase. It's got its own little, uh, uh, own little uh, uh, you know, binary code for even the lowercase letters. And then it gets really crazy as you go out you know, longer and longer and longer of the different words and all. Can, you can just imagine, but the computers are super fast and they can go through this and they can actually plot it to what it is. Then it takes that information, processes, and puts up either on a screen for us where we understand it, or it actually goes and puts it out as a, a command to turn like that AC compressor on. So let's get in a little bit on the uh, the uh, computer operation. One of the things uh, I really uh, think, and believe me, this is an old computer that I have up here. It does not have the processing speed. This is an old Ford computer uh, that they I, I actually found uh, that I could take a picture of and like that. 
This is uh, what, what I'm talking about. This is a unit that all it does is process information. It doesn't uh, get up and walk around or anything. Like that. It just processes information. It has a bunch of drivers, which are really heavy duty transistors that have a heat sink to them to keep them cool when they are turning things on and off. So th I, I, this is what I really thought was you know, really good. This is uh, on a network system, which your vehicles are now networked. Uh, they look at all different information off of the, uh, and this is just a simplified version. Uh, they, they actually look at uh, this uh, information from different components of different uh, sensors and, and devices on your car. And it says, okay, I want to select it into manual mode. Okay, then it has to go through, okay, this is one. Then I, I the compressor manual uh, on. It, then it looks for the compressor start and it has to start on with a certain amount of time. And then it, it starts the compressor and starts, you know, compressor. And this is just something I found. So it is auto mode, goes a little bit different. It looks at the pressure monitor and it looks at the compressor trip, how much time the compressor was on. So I thought it was a pretty good uh, picture of how a compressor could go on and off. So, and this is all done in the blink of an eye for you. You really don't get, you know, a lot of, um, the lag time, as we used to get some of the lag time back in the day, but now it really took up that lag time. So we could have something where it turns on a stepper motor to up the idle speed before the compressor came on. Early on, to accommodate uh, cars with a AC system, we would actually take and bring up the idle speed just a little bit more. That actually uses more gas, which, you know, with the stepper motor, it only does it for that period of time, or that um, it could actually be the throttle body, just, you know, kind of bring it up just a little bit more. So looking at computers, uh, there are certain parts of the computer, uh, the, the processing unit, or some, you know, read-only memory, you probably heard of stuff like this, where it's uh, it's got a program in it, and all this this guy is here there is to read it because he's going to help me, uh, with the calculations. And then we have a RAM, uh, random access memory. That's where it can actually do its work. It's like having a desk, and the bigger desk is the bigger amount of RAM you might have. And then we have the programming part, where it actually is a it, this is an er erasable. Uh, a processor on this particular one, uh, but it actually can be upgraded. Now, early on, to get an upgrade on your computer, uh, either you had to take the computer to the uh, manufacturer, or you had a uh, chip replacement, uh, which was a process of doing, and you hope you didn't damage any of the pins when you were doing it. I did quite a few chip replacements in my, in my time. But this kind of gives you the idea of how that process, you know, it takes the pro it takes all this information in, does its processing. So we're gonna look, you know, look at the programming. We're gonna use a little space to actually do our calculations, and then we're gonna look at the other part of the programming that we need to actually understand too as we go across. So there's different types of memory out there. Uh, is your read only, like I said before, your random access. And then we have uh, the EEE prom, and, and then we get the EEE prom. There's all kinds of different, I don't want you to get to uh, totally hung up on that. I just want you to know how a computer works. And this is uh, kind of uh, a good picture of what a read-only memory is. It's stuck into the circuit board. It's not something you're gonna actually be removing. Uh, your, uh, other types of memory, your like your random access memory. This is a what I think of when I think of uh, random access memory is when I'm looking at uh, like in my computer where I can actually snap in more memory, give my computer more memory or less memory. It has something similar to this in a uh, processor on a car. It's not something that yet you can actually go through and actually replace this to beef up your memory process. Now. You also have the EEPROM. This is an EEPROM erasable program read-only 
memory, and then you're going to electrically array relay 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 the re erasable programmable read-only memory, and your electronical uh, electro electrically. Uh, this is where they have the memory inside the computers where I can go in and I can update a lot of the information too. So there has to be a clock. If you don't have a clock to go through and uh, it help you with under you know how much time it took. You know, so if I say a, an actuator was you know, and I say, say let's say a uh, a. a uh, something like a uh, throttle position sensor or something with an analog signal and it comes across here and you say okay it, it swept up but we don't know how much time it took it to sweep up we need to know how much time so we can bring that back to the computer along with you know, the analog to digital um, analog to digital uh, yeah, converter along that too so this is showing how this uh, what was all involved so we get the data coming in and then we have that input or uh, device which could be an analog uh, to a digital converter we take that data we go into the microprocessor and the microprocessor is looking at the read only we're looking at the RAM, uh, RAM we're looking at the EEPROM and then when it goes through and does all its calculations it puts an output. Uh, it either turns on the compressor or does that stepper motor up. This is where it actually goes through and uh, it looks at that information and it says, okay, it's good to turn the compressor on. Or you know what? I see we're really putting a lot into acceleration and that'll take back the power. So we're going to leave that compressor off until we actually um, we actually get to the point where we can actually go through and uh, turn the compressor on when it's a more of a steady pace. The other thing too is if it sees that the refrigerant level is low, you know, we have the low side, we cycle it on, but it went right back off. The, the compressor will be turning that back off and it may even turn it off, you know, to, uh, you know, to and for, until the, the prop, you know, until the freon problem gets solved. Uh, there you go and then you know in our inputs there are going to be things you know, like a I layer to control a TPS and uh, engine control uh, I mean sorry in, engine temp uh, you know, coolant temperature control looking at the uh, re request from the so these are all on the input side and then it goes through and it processes it through whichever uh, pro, um, com, you know computer it has. It could have, uh, uh, it could be, you know, it's kind of a, a strange. Uh, I have seen more of the AC system on the body control module, but some cars actually put it on the PCM, or they may put it on a BFC. So you got to really look at okay, what processes this through before I start tackling where it is at. And then it gives an output uh, to that actual device, like the uh, clutch relay, a fan motor is going to be put, turning on also, and that module, it, it could be a idle air control uh, and the AC relay and the fan, uh, the cooling fan relay could all be one device or individual devices. And then it's going to give a feedback. It's going to say, okay, I turned it on and now we're good to go. Or I tried to turn it on, but it didn't come on. And, and some vehicles will actually set a code for that. All right. Kind of, uh, all right, so I think we've got kind of what we were talking about. So uh, when we go into the components that are affected by the system, we're looking at the, uh, like the compressor here. And when the compressor clutch is not engaged, even with a uh, proper refrigerant level, the problem can be caused by a signal, other signals. So we can't just say it's not full, it's full, but I don't know, you know, know why it, it doesn't turn on. We got to figure out it's part, it could be part of that AC management system that's involved in. So it, it looks at all these particular, I gave a few of them, like, a, you know, it, it could be a faulty, uh, throttle position sensor. It could be a faulty pressure switch. All these things could be, and we have to go down and identify them. And how do we do it? 
We get out the wiregram. How is this guy wired in? We go through the service information. We look at the manufacturer to see exactly what we need to do uh, to get that to work. Um, so basically, you know, how the you know, module looks at, you know, it kind of senses what's going on, it decides, and then it acts. Uh, so those are pretty much the three basic elements of an organization of the computer and the uh, actual module obey. Uh, so the module receives a number of input signals. It takes these signals and it compares them with the information stored in the memory. And then it makes a decision. It says, okay, uh, we command uh, it on. And if it gets a re uh, reflect back out and it says, yeah, we commanded it on, but it didn't turn on because I didn't see any changes going on, then it could actually flag a, a BCM code. So uh, I, I kind of wanted to stop at this point and we'll get into, because this one a little bit longer than the little short ones, I want to make sure that uh, you, it kind of sinks in a little bit as we go along. But I wanted to conclude this with, again, with that, uh, that chart I showed you in a previous video on, if you look at the way the flow goes, and if we look at the ignition switch, we also have a battery input on this one. So if I have a fuse or a problem either way, I could be part of that interruption circuit. And then here it comes down to my compressor relay, and then I have my compressor clutch. Again, that, that, this one actually has a Zener diode, that's why you see that squiggly, uh, squiggly thing, okay? And it comes on down. I, I, I kind of want to point that out because I didn't want you to get confused because a lot of times it's just a straight line with a, one of the edges this way. Uh, we'll talk more about Zener diodes as we go on. As I, uh, as I go down, um, uh, here is my AC compressor relay control, and then I have my inputs from my HVAC uh, module. It, it's my um, request, and it may have, again, there's another thing I didn't think about. It could be a, a temp. Uh, no, temperature of the uh, evaporated. If it's too cold, it's not gonna allow it to come on. And then we could have all these other inputs from my powertrain uh, module. Maybe it's, uh, we, we're warming up the car we're, and we're not at coolant temp yet. We're, what about my throttle, like I said before? And then we, uh, my AC pressures, okay? And my crank sensor, is the car running? Like that. So all these things could be obstacles causing it not to turn on that AC compressor. All right, hopefully that was beneficial. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my slide right now. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. You know how to get a hold of me. You can get a hold of me either through email or you can text me or you can leave a comment down below. All right, folks, take care and I will be talking to you soon.